Um, so first, I just want to welcome everyone that's watching either live or uh, in the future on Facebook or through our social media. I know, <laughs> in the future. Um, uh, we are so happy to have um, Connor Burbridge here and Andy and Marlene who are, um, have been doing so much work in organizing these gardening workshops um, to bring them directly to your homes. And um, this uh, program is made possible because of Southside Vision and uh, Penn State um, Extension and um, also because of uh, Bethlehem Area Public Library who's hosting it. And so um, we just want to thank you all for coming and being a part of this. And we do uh, want to let people know that this session is recorded and it will be posted to uh, Bethlehem Area Public Library social media website so we can share it with others. Um, and I already see that Cindy has um, gone ahead and uh, muted and um, stopped her video. Um, but those that join in can, uh, can also do that. And um, Andy, perfect with the screen sharing. Um, we can just keep you spotlighted for the for the rest of this if you're comfortable with that. Um, uh, you and um, after Connor says something, if he would like to say something, and uh, you and Marlene will then just be spotlighted for the remainder of the presentation. Cool. Yeah. So everybody, welcome back for another edition of our Home Gardens of Hope um, workshops. We hope if you weren't here in person that you can catch this at home um, on Facebook. Uh, uh, wherever you find it. Um, so this uh, workshop is being put on through the Southside Garden Alliance, which is a project of Southside Vision with the city of Bethlehem. We do some work on uh, educational work like this. We do some community garden stuff. Um, and we're working on a seed library at the public library with our awesome librarians. Um, so this series of workshops also involves a uh, free distribution of garden resources. So you can get those either uh, at different food banks at Broggle Middle School um, or um, on the Greenway outside Cafe the Lodge at the Little Free Library. So we'll be having one more of our workshop um, next week, five to six on Thursday. So tune in then as well if you couldn't make it. Um, so we're also doing these in English as Spanish. Over 40% of our community in the South Side um, is Hispanic or speaks Spanish. And we wanna work with them in their own language and culture because working with the community is really important to us. Um, our presenters tonight will be Andy and Marlene. Andy has a lot of experience gardening. Um, they were the co-creator of the Southside Permaculture Park and an organizer with the Alliance for Sustainable Communities. Marlene is a student of ecology, helps with permaculture, and has worked on a farm, and she is from Argentina. So, bienvenidos, hola a todos, gracias a todos por estar aquí. Mi nombre es Connor y yo soy el organizador principal de Southside Garden Alliance. Southside Garden Alliance es un grupo comunitario en South Bethlehem que trabaja en jardines comunitarios, puertos familiares, talleres educativos y un biblica de germinatas y biblioteca de semillas. The Home Gardens of Hope es un proye proyecto de Southside Garden Alliance y Southside Vision 2020, un programa, programa de Community Action Development Corporation of Bethlehem en asociación con la ciudad de Bethlehem. La Home Gardens of Hope es un serie de talleres y distribución gratuita de recursos de jardinera durante las medidas de distanciamiento social. Habrá dos talleres más durante los huevos de mayo de 5 a 6 de p.m. La presentación será en inglés y en español. Esto es importante para nosotros porque más de 40 por ciento de los miembros de nuestra comunidad habla español. Queremos trabajar con ellos en su propio idioma y cultura. No, nuestros presentadores esta noche serán Andy y Marlen. Anda a trabajo en una granja durante el último año. Es co-creador de Southside Permaculture Park y organizador de Alliance of Sustainable Communities Lehigh Valley. Marlen es Estudiante de Ecología, ayuda con el parque de permaculture. 
hay, hay trabajo en una granja. Ella es de Argentina y va a ayudar a traducir. Ahora comencemos. Gracias. Thanks, Connor. Um, and thank you all for coming out. Today we're going to be talking about gardening, ecology, nutrition, healthy eating, all the good stuff. Um, and if you were here last week, we've got a special surprise for you at the end. Um, so be sure to stay tuned for that. So life lives in service to life. Organisms in their life and death provide the things that other organisms need to live. Over time, ecosystems tend towards greater complexity and diversity, and such diversity tends to stabilize the ecosystem overall. This is obvious in places like forests and meadows or coral reefs, the places we call nature. And you might think that humans live in disservice to life, making it harder for other organisms rather than easier. In fact, it is not humans that do this, but a specific culture. This is good news because it means we can change that. By working together to create diverse garden ecosystems, we too can thrive in service to all life. Organismos en su vida y muerte provienen las cosas que otros organismos necesitan para vivir. A través del tiempo, ecosistemas tienden hacia mayor complejidad y diversidad. Y la diversidad tiende a, estabilizar, a estabilizarse en general. Esto es obvio en lugares como bosques, prados o arrecife de coral. Lugares que llamamos naturaleza. Y por ahí piensa que humanos viven en de servicio a la vida haciendo lo más difícil para otros organismos en vez de más fácil. De hecho, no son humanos que hacen esto, pero la cultura específica. Estos son buenas noticias porque significa que los podemos cambiar. Trabajando juntos para crear sistemas de jardines diversas, nosotros también podemos florecer en servicio a la vida. So, symbiosis. Symbiosis is the technical term for mutually beneficial relationships between organisms. Symbiosis is crucial to the success of all organisms, and without it, life could not exist. Bees, butterflies, moths, and other insects pollinate the flowers of hundreds of thousands of different species of plants, allowing them to make fruit and seeds to grow the next generation. In exchange, the bees get nectar and pollen to feed the hive. Birds and mammals then eat the fruit, spreading the seeds far and wide and planting them inside a safe paddy of fertile manure. Nut trees like oaks, hickories, and walnuts provide shelter and food for squirrels, which in turn plant out hundreds of new trees when they bury them, when they bury more than they need to make it through the winter. Fungi in the soil convert minerals in the rocks into usable nutrients that the plants need as well as manufacturing antibiotic compounds to protect plants from infection. And in turn, the plants provide the fungi with sugars from photosynthesis that the plants cannot produce on their own, or that the fungi cannot produce on their own. We'll talk more about fungi next week, so if you're into that, stay tuned. Um, in the tree of life, countless beings are engaged in perpetual mutual aid, creating an entangled web for the benefit of all life. Symbiosis is un tema técnica que describe la el relación mutuamente beneficial entre organismos. Simbiosis es crucial para el éxito de todos los organismos y sin ello la vida no podría existir. Abejas, mariposas, polillas y otros insectos polinas, polinizan las flores de cientos de miles de diferentes especies de plantas, permitiéndoles que crezcan frutas y semillas para crecer la próxima generación. A cambio Las abejas obtienen néctar y polen para dar de comer a la colmena. Aves y mamíferas después comen la fruta, extendiendo las semillas a lo largo y plantándolos dentro de un campo con tierra fértil y abono. Árboles de nueces y árboles robles provienen refugios y comida para ardillas que en turno 
plantan cientos de árboles nuevos cuando entierran más nueces que necesitan para sobrevivir el invierno. Hongos en la tierra convierten minerales en las rocas a nutrientes usables que necesitan las plantas. También manufac manufacturando compuestos antibióticos para proteger las plantas de enfermedades. Y en cambio, las plantas provienen el hongo con azúcares de fotosíntesis que los hongos no pueden producir solo. Lo cual vamos a hablar más de esto en la próxima semana. En el árbol de la vida, innumerables organismos están per perpetuamente involucrados en ayuda mutua, creando una tela para el beneficio de toda la vida. Well, every ecosystem can be organized into what's known as a food web. Uh, we'll focus here on a typical food web that you might find in a temperate forest like here in Bethlehem. Energy comes from the sun, which feeds the photosynthetic plants. These plants, with the help of decomposers, produce nutrient-rich vegetation, nuts and seeds, that are consumed by rodents, birds, and insects. These rodents, birds, and insects are in turn eaten by other birds, snakes, and larger mammals, some of which are eaten by larger animals still. At each stage, much of the biomass consumed is returned to the decomposers as urine and feces, pee and poop. And at the end of each organism's life, it gets consumed by the decomposers and returned to the soil, where it can live again as a plant. With each life cycle, more and more energy is captured from the sun, more soil is built up, and the diversity and number of organisms can increase. Life lives in service to life. Um, Andy, do you want to switch to the next slide? Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, mientras que cada ecosistema puede estar organizado en lo que se llama una red alimentaria, aquí nos vamos a enfocar en una red alimentaria típica de un bosque templado. Energía viene del sol y le da de comer a las plantas fotosintéticas. Estas plantas, con la ayuda de descomponedores, producen vegetación, nueces y semillas ricas en nutri nutrientes que están consumidos por eh, roedores, aves y insectos. Estos roedores, aves e insectos están comidos por otros aves víboras y mamíferas más grandes, algunos que están comidos por otros mamíferas más grandes. En cada grado, mucho de la biomasa está consumido y retornado a los descomponedores como orina o heces. Y a la fin de la vida de cada organismo está consumida por los descomponedores y retornado a la tierra donde puede vivir de vuelta como una planta. En cada ciclo, más y más energía está capturado del sol, más tierra está construido y la diversidad y cantidad de los organismos puede incrementar. Vida vive en servicio a la vida. The basis of all terrestrial life, that is, life on land, is soil. Soil is not the dead dirt that many people think it is. It is, in fact, a highly living tissue that had to be delicately constructed over the course of eons to make the fertile ground that supports life on land. Microorganisms in the soil break down dead plant and animal matter into a substance called humus and convert the minerals in rocks and sediment into usable nutrients. As these tiny organisms get consumed by higher trophic levels, that is, bigger organisms, uh, those nutrients make their way into more and more organisms and eventually find their way into us. If the soil is not healthy, then nutrients cannot be made available to plants and the resulting food is less healthy. We'll take a closer look at the ecology of soil next week, but for now, just know that soil is alive and that healthy soil is the key to healthy food and healthy people. La base de toda vida terrestrial es tierra. Tierra no está muerta como mucha gente piensa. De hecho, es un tejido viva que tuvo que estar de delicadamente construida sobre el curso de eones para hacer suelo fértil 
que puede soportar vida. Microorganismos en la tierra descomponen materia de plantas muertas y materia de animales en una sustancia llamada humus o mantillo y convierte los minerales en rocas y sedimentos nutritivos usables. Estos organismos pequeños están consumidos por niveles tróficos. Estos nutrientes llegan a más y más organismos y eventualmente llegan a nosotros. Si la tierra no está sana, nutrientes no están disponibles para, pla para plantas y la comida que resulta es menos sana. Vamos a ver más cerca la ecología de tierra la semana que viene, pero por ahora sepa que tierra está viva y que tierra sana es el clave para comida sana y gente sana. The human body needs at least 40 different mineral nutrients, 13 vitamins, 9 essential amino acids, and 2 essential fatty acids. The human body cannot synthesize these essential nutrients, so they must be obtained from our diets. Failure to consume sufficient quantities of these nutrients can lead to improper physical and mental development, as well as many diseases and disorders throughout life. Fortunately, food grown in healthy, living soil can easily create these nutrients. Industrial agriculture substitutes healthy, living soil for inorganic synthetic fertilizer. And as a result, that food lacks the trace minerals that our bodies need. That's why a fresh pepper from the garden tastes so much better than one from the supermarket. Your body knows it's missing those minerals and it rewards you when you give it what it needs. I like to eat every color in the rainbow at least once each day to ensure that I'm getting all the nutrients my body needs. So healthy, healthy people starts with healthy, healthy food which starts with healthy soil. El cuerpo humano necesita por lo menos 40 nutrientes minerales diferentes, 13 vitaminas, 9 aminoácidos esenciales y 2 ácidos grasos esenciales. El cuerpo humano no puede sintetizar estos nutrientes esenciales, así que se necesita obtener de nuestras dietas. El fallo de obtener cantidades suficientes de estos nutrientes puede llegar a causar un desarrollo de físico y mente incorrecto, además de muchas enfermedades durante la vida. Afortunadamente, comida que crece en una tierra sana y viva puede fácilmente crear estos nutritivos. Agricultura industrial sustituye tierra sana y viva para fertilizantes inorgánicas y sintéticos. Y de hecho, resulta en comida que... Te que le falta a los minerales que necesitan nuestros cuerpos. Por eso un pimiento fresco del huerto tiene sabor mucho mejor que un, uno comprado del supermercado. Tu cuerpo sabe que le falta esos minerales y te recompensa cuando lo, le das lo que necesita. A mí me gusta comer de cada color del ar, arco iris, pero lo menos, por lo menos una vez al vida para asegurar al día para asegurarme que estoy obteniendo todos los nutrientes que necesita mi cuerpo. La gente sana empieza con comida sana, lo cual empieza con tierra sana. So how do we make healthy soil? Healthy soil is alive. And in order to bring soil to in order to bring soil to life, we need to add you guessed it, life. Adding the remains of living organisms like wood chips, leaves, and grass clippings helps to feed the microorganisms in the soil and bring it back to life. Mulching with a thick layer of leaves in the fall is a great way to support soil health and ensure that next year's crops will be bigger and healthier than this year's. Adding a few inches of wood chips to the bottom of a pot before filling it with soil not only helps with drainage, but supports communities of fungi and beneficial insects that keep plants and people healthy. Composting kitchen scraps along with leaves and other organic matter is a great way to create powerful living soil for growing the best tasting and healthiest food around. And of course, planting diverse types of plants helps provide both the soil and your body with the full range of nutrients that it needs. Así que, ¿cómo creamos tierra sana? Tierra sana está viva y para que la tierra vive tenemos que aumentarle vida, vida, agregando los restos de organismos vivas como astilas de madera, 
hojas y recortes de césped ayuda a dar de comer los microorganismos en la tierra y darle vida. Cubriendo el suelo con una capa gruesa de hojas en el otoño es una manera buena de soportar la salud de la tierra y asegurar que los cultivos para el año que viene crecen más grandes y más sanos. Agregando unas pulgadas de astila de madera al fondo de una maceta antes de llenarla con tierra no solamente ayuda con drenaje, pero soporta comunidad de, comunidades de hongos y insectos beneficiosos que ayudan a mantener las plantas sanas y de hecho la gente. Abornar residuos de la cocina con hojas y otra materia orgánica es una manera buena de crear potente tierra viva para crecer comida sana y rica. Y por supuesto, plantando plantas diversas ayuda a provenir la tierra y tu cuerpo como, con la gama completa de nutrientes que necesita. Don't have room to garden the full rainbow? Not to worry. Bethlehem has gifted us with all kinds of wild edibles to fill in the gaps. From fruits and berries, to flowers and vegetables, to nuts and mushrooms, everything we need is right around us, if you know where to look. And with a little bit of effort and a lot of love, we can dramatically expand the amount of healthy food growing freely in our community for the benefit of all the many beings who live here. By gardening for healthy soil, putting back organic matter and recycling these nutrients to create the foundation for healthy ecology, we can create healthy food not just for us, but for all the birds, bees, little insects, massive trees, and all the many different beings that we share this earth with. No tiene lugar para cultivar el arco iris entero. No se preocupe. Bethlehem nos ha dado todos tipos de comestibles salvajes para llenar los huecos. De frutas a bayas, a flores y a vegetales, a nueces, a hongos, todo lo que necesitamos está a nuestro alrededor. Si sabes dónde ver o buscar. Y con un poco de fuerza y mucho amor podemos dramáticamente expandir la cantidad de comida sana creciendo libremente en nuestra comunidad para la beneficia de todos que viven aquí. So we thought it might be nice to leave you with some recipes for using all that fresh, healthy produce that you'll now be growing. So here are a few of our favorites. Pesto is super easy to make and a great way to use up all those greens. It can be made with herbs like basil and parsley or with greens like spinach and arugula and even with wild greens like cress and garlic mustard. Uh, this recipe is a baseline, but if you have more or less greens or more or less oil or um, just based on your taste, you can adjust it. Uh, but the basic idea is you take green things and you blend them with some oil. And that's pesto. <laughs> Pensamos que sería lindo dejarlo con unas recetas para usar toda esta comida fresca y sana que estarán creciendo. Así que acá está una de nuestras favoritas. Pesto se puede hacer fácilmente y es una manera muy buena de usar toda esa verdura. Se puede hacer con hierbas como albahaca, perejil o con otras verduras como espinaca o rúcula. Y también con verduras salvajes como barro o mostaza de ajo. Pesto es una receta muy básica de hacer y se puede ajustar al gusto, eh, pero la idea básica es eh, mezclar unos verdes, unas verduras con aceite. Y eso es pesto. <risa> Pickling is a great way to preserve all of that summer abundance for the leaner winter times. And it's super easy to do. Simply cover the fruits or vegetables in salt water, also known as brine, add some spices if you like, and let it get bubbly. Fermented foods are extremely good for you and have been linked to decreased risk of cancers and other diseases, as well as increased longevity. Uh, there's a link in the slides to a great pamphlet on pickling and other fermentation recipes that I'd highly recommend. It's also on the next slide and um, we'll give you access to this presentation after it's over so you can see it for reference. Um, but yeah, it's pickling's really easy and some people might be kind of turned off by it, but it's, um, 
it's really easy once you start and realize that it's really not that hard to do, um, then you'll start to realize how much fun it is. Mm -hmm. And once the winter comes around and the garden's covered up, you got a nice thick layer of leaf mulch on top, um, you'll be really grateful that you have all this pickled produce. Eh, escabechar es una manera buena para preservar toda esa abundancia del verano para el invierno y es muy, muy fácil hacer. Simplemente cubre las frutas o vegetales en agua salada o una salmuera, agregue especias si quiera y deja que haga burbujas. Comida fermentada es muy buena para ti y está vinculado a riesgo disminuido de cáncer y otras enfermedades, además de longevidad incrementada. Hay un link en las di diapositivas que tiene un panfleto sobre escabecha y otras recetas de fermentación. Pero este panfleta es en inglés. Sí, está en inglés, pero está. <laughs> <laughs> sí. um, oh, so this is like a general reference chart, definitely not the be all end all, uh, but a good place to start for how much salt to use for different kinds of pickles. Um, if you're pickling really wet things like cucumbers and peppers, you know, use a little more salt. For kind of denser things like carrots and the roots, you can get away with less salt. Um, but definitely recommend checking out this, um, this zine, Wild Fermentation. It's got all kinds of things from pickles and krauts to yogurts and breads and uh, definitely would recommend. Así que estos gráficos son una referencia general para empezar y no una autoridad absoluta. Ahí puedes ver que los, las zanahorias, los rábanos y el remolacha pueden usar menos sal. También hay un panfleto en el link que ves ahí, pero está en inglés. Um, así eh, puede fijarse más detalles. There's nothing quite like fresh tomatoes for pasta sauces, salsas, or chili. And with the magic of canning, you can enjoy homegrown tomatoes year round. Uh, some people might have told you that canning is difficult and dangerous, but I've been canning tomatoes at home with nothing but a few large pots and some mason jars for years, and I've never had any issues. This is sort of a general recipe, but I'd encourage you to look up a few more or maybe search for some YouTube videos for more detailed descriptions. Uh, but basically, you boil tomatoes, you clean the jars in boiling water, you put the tomatoes, you add some salt and acid to the tomatoes, you put it in the jar, make sure the lid is clean, and put the, or the, sorry, the rim is clean, and then you put the lid on it, and make sure you get a good seal, and tighten it up, and let it cool. And it's important that the Oh, you have to use like the real canning lids that have the little bubble pop thing with the, if you just have like a single piece plastic lid, you're not going to be able to use that. Um, and the jar should suck in and stay that way. If at any point it pops back out, um, if you can press the jar and it makes this sound, then you're your can is is gone and it's no good. Actually, I'm gonna, well, I'll, um, yeah, I'll let you, Merlin go and then I'll turn off screen sharing so I can show that visually. Okay. <laughs> no hay nada como tomates frescas para pasta, salsas o chili y con la magia de Mase puede disfrutar tomates de la huerta por todo el año. Algunas personas por ahí le dijo que envasamiento es difícil y peligroso, pero lo, yo estuve envasando tomates en casa con nada menos de unas ollas y unos frascos por unos años y nunca tuve problemas. Esto es una receta general, pero le animo que busque otras recetas o vídeos en YouTube para descripciones más detalladas. Pero la idea básica es picas tomates, lo pones a hervir, limpias unos frascos con agua caliente y le echas unos ácidos y sal y lo ensayas bien. Y si la tapa hace ese sonido que te mostró Andy y te va a mostrar ahora, 
eh, no está bien para consumir y no, no tenés que tirar. Cool. Uh, how do I get out of screen share? Exit. Oh, nope, that's not it. Hmm. Stop share. Oh, here we go. Cool. So just to clarify that, um, a lid like this, where it's one piece, is no good for canning. It's fine for storing things temporarily. Um, you could use it for pickling, but it's no good for canning where you're not going to be keeping them at uh, cold temperatures and you're keeping them for a long time. This is a good sealed lid. Notice how when you press on it, it doesn't flex and it doesn't make a sound. And then this is an unsealed lid, which presses in and makes that popping sound. So this one uh, is good. And so that's what you want to look for. And if at any time, you know, they've been in the cupboard for a few months and then you notice that it's popped up, don't eat it. Así que no se puede usar las tapas de plástico para el envasamiento específicamente. Um, si hace eso, ese sonido, no está bien para consumir, pero el otro envase que te mostró, donde no hacía ningún ruido, ahí se puede consumir. Pero en algún tiempo, si, si ves que hace como unos meses, pasa unos meses y, y la tapa se abre así, no se puede comer. Um. Cool. So if you were here last week, you got to see a fun demonstration of scallions and how you can regrow them from the scallions that you buy in the supermarket. And so uh, I mentioned that they grow quickly. So I figured I'd follow up on that scallion from last week. So that's where we cut it last week, that white line where it got gray. And that's how much it's grown in seven days. Um, so, Ahí se muestra, la <laughs> te uh, muestra una cebolleta que cortó la semana pasada y lo cortó donde ves el blanco para y el resto el verde es lo que creció en una semana. <laughs> uh, Significativo. So, you know, if you get a bunch of scallions at the grocery store and maybe there's six scallions in there and you um, cut them like we showed in the last video and plant the bottom part with the roots, um, you know, that's a week's worth of growth. So if you have that scattered with six or seven scallions, you've got that much a day. Um, that's a nice garnish to just have on constant steady supply, um, which is cool. <laughs> Andy, could you do a refresher of how to replant scallions from the grocery store? Yeah, let me go get some fresh ones because we got a we got some more because they came in like a my mom's been getting Misfit Market, which is like ugly produce. Um, okay, we got a bunch of scallions, so I'll go get one. Okay, so while Andy's getting that, everybody. Um, this is kind of like the end of the workshop, the formal part. Um, we, we won't have the first workshop posted um, just for some issues that we had with um, technology and stuff, mm -hmm. but this one will be posted and next week's we'll be recording and posting to Facebook um, and stuff as well. So if anybody has any questions, feel free to throw them in the chat or unmute yourself. Um, but we thank everybody for uh, showing up and uh, being so respectful and uh, yeah, taking the time to enjoy the afternoon with us. Eh, queremos clari clarificar que el video de la semana pasada no está grabado y no va a estar posteado en el sitio, pero este sí va a estar. Y ahora es la parte informal de, um, del workshop. Así que si alguien tiene algunas preguntas, eh, ahora es el tiempo para preguntar. So this is a scallion as you get it, and you want to take it uh, and take bottom inch or so. And this is the part that you plant. 
Um, and you can actually plant it right in water and it'll grow fine. Um, if you have a pot of soil, it'll be happy in there too. And then you can eat the rest of it and just plant that bottom inch and in a week, it'll look like that. Así que cortas eh, una pulgada del, del fondo de la cebolleta y lo puedes plantar en agua o en tierra y en una semana va a crecer eh, así como te mostró eh, Andy. Cool. Um, well, thanks for joining us <laughs> and we hope you enjoyed it and learned some things. And Next week, we'll be talking about fungi and mushrooms and uh, soil life in a lot more detail. Um, might teach you how to grow some mushrooms at home, um, maybe some wild foraging tips, who knows? Um, but yeah, we're free for questions. La semana que viene vamos a hacer el taller sobre hongos y por ahí forraje salvaje, eh, pero por ahora están libre para preguntar cosas. Hacer preguntas. Awesome. Well, pending any questions, um, thank you so much, Andy and Marlene, for another great session. Uh, we'll be put again. We'll be posting this on Facebook. We have one more next week, so tune in next Thursday at 5 p.m. Uh, also, if you need free garden materials, you can connect with the um, New Bethany Food Pantry. You have the Hispanic Center Food Pantry in South Bethlehem. Broggle Middle School may be distributing more um, gardens. So if you're a Broggle family, stay tuned. Um, or uh, Bethlehem Area School District family, stay tuned for the distribution at Broggle. And we also will be working on distributing some free garden materials, including seeds, pots, at uh, Linfield Community Center. So thanks everybody for tuning in. Hope to see you next week. Thank you so much. Sorry. No, no, está bien. You can go. Sorry. <laughs> Va a haber una distribución en, en los lugares que dijo Connor, no sé, Bravo y qué más. What, what else? What other places did you say? New Bethany. New uh, Bethany. Hispanic Center. Hispanic Center. Y en la semana que viene vamos a hablar más, pero por, a, por ahora, muchas gracias a todos. Oh, and uh, check the Southside Garden Alliance Facebook page for updates too. Mm -hmm. Check in el Facebook de Southside Garden Alliance para ver más noticias. Sweet. Adiós a todos. Thank you everyone so much for your time and your talents. <laughs>